So in this session, we're going to look at the enhancements that have been made uh, with with regard to handling JSON in um, the Power Builder 2019. So the first thing, we have a legal disclaimer. Let's go over the agenda. In case people aren't familiar with who I am, I thought I'd uh, introduce myself first. Now I was going to talk about the different uh, formats of JSON that uh, Power Builder supports. Um, talk about the row level import and export that was added. The enhancements that were made to the JSON generator, to the JSON parser, to the JSON packager, and then I was going to have a demo of some of these new features. So first a little bit about myself. My name is Bruce Armstrong. I work for a company called Integrated Data Services. I've been there since 2004. Part of that I spent 15 years doing independent contracting as a power builder developer. Um, when I joined Integrated Data Services, they were, are an ISV that was writing uh, Power Builder client server applications for customers. We've since migrated primarily to HTML5 JavaScript with Java in the middle tier, but we do have some customers that are still using the uh, Power Builder version of the applications. And in addition to Power Builder, I know Oracle PL SQL, Java, C Sharp, and, uh, and I know a little bit of uh, C++. I'm involved in a number of open source projects. Uh, the open source PFC libraries being one of those. Uh, I wrote a utility called PBNI STMTP, which is in C Sharp. I'm oh, sorry, C++, um, because it's a Power Builder native interface extension to Power Builder. Uh, it allows you to send email via SMTP. I also wrote some Jenkins, Jenkins plugins. Uh, one of those in particular uses the auto compile capability that was introduced in 2017 and is available in 2019 as well to do command line compiles of your Power Builder app. So particularly if you're looking to do continuous integration, that might be something you want, want to look at. A little bit about the company I work for. So let's go and talk about the different formats of JSON. Um, there are two formats in particular. Uh, one that is the type of JSON that's used you know, by all the different uh, tools out there. Do And what um, Appion refers to as simple JSON. It's um, name value pairs, it's uh, arrays of that information, it's structures and arrays of those structures, um, that kind of data. There's also what, what Appian calls standard data window JSON. Uh, what this is, is instead of just sending data in sa standard data window JSON, metadata is sent as long, along as well. So things like row um, state flag information, column state flag information, um, the um, original and updated values for a column, uh, everything the data window needs to do, all that great stuff it does in client server applications is also available in REST web services because this standard data window JSON um, provides that metadata. And if you will, uh, back in the distributed power builder days, we had um, ability to save the data window state as blobs and use that in distributed power builder. This is the same thing, but using um, a standard data type, in other words, JSON, to send the metadata. So here's an example of simple JSON. And as I said, it's uh, name value pairs. So, so uh, you've got a number of different columns, a number of different values for those columns. This is standard data window JSON. So um, notice it's got a reference to the data window object that was used to create this. It's got different sections. One is contains metadata for the columns one that has the primary rows, one that has the filter rows, one that has the delete rows, and another one that has any drop, uh, any um, child data windows that were in the data window. And so we'll have their data. This is the uh, column metadata section. So you have the name of a column, um, you have uh, whether or not ha there's an index on it, what its data type is, whether it's nullable. Um, this is the, what's in the row information. Uh, so you have a row status, you have a column status. If a, if a, if a column's been updated, uh, when the update is sent, the original value and the current, the current or new value is sent for the column. And there's actually a column uh, status level as well. I, I, I truncated that. Um, this is uh, the simple row information. So then you've got your name value pairs again. Uh, so this is an example of what simple JSON looks like. Name value pair, name value pair. 
um, the bracket represents uh, this being an array. Uh, all those, there's only one row here, but if there were multiple rows, you'd have a comma after that uh, bracket, and then you'd have another uh, array. This is um, what data looks like in the standard window, data window JSON. There, once again, is your um, data window. Here's some information about uh, one of the columns. Here's the rest of the columns. Uh, here's your primary row, row status, column, um, uh, columns, I should say. So here's your user ID. Now, this was from an update. Now, what happened is the user ID wasn't changed. So just the one value is sent. The ID value, just it didn't change, just the one value is sent. The body didn't change, just the one value is sent. But the title in this particular update, the title was changed. So in standard data window JSON, there's the original value. Okay. There's the new value. And then there is the uh, column status information. Okay. So um, it's important to know the different formats because a lot of the functions we're going to look at now um, want to know, they're going to ask you to tell them what format you want the JSON in. So uh, we have the import row from JSON. Um, so previous to this change, if you wanted to import data into um, a data window, you had to do it as one big shot. Uh, if you went to import another um, JSON string, it would replace the data that was in the um, in the data window. This is the ability to uh, import a single row of JSON and indicate where you want that row put. Uh, so you pass in the JSON, indicate what row you want, and you can pass in a string by reference that will take any error messages that are generated during the import, and you can also specify which uh, data buffer it goes into, either primary, filter, or deleted. Uh, this can be either format. The data window, when it's importing this, can look at the data at the JSON and determine whether or not it's the standard JSON, or I should say, simple JSON, or the data window JSON. Okay, the export row is JSON. Um, you indicate what row you want to yeah, export and uh, what data buffer that you want to export from. So you could in, you could export you know from a row from either the primary delete or uh, filter buffer. So this was a this is an example of what that change does. This was a sample I put together for uh, 2017 um, that showed how to get data out of a data window. Um, and this um, is the same code where I'm using import row from JSON. Now um, this this actually didn't change that much. Um, what I was doing here was I was getting each each value independently and setting it into the data window. Now what I'm doing is I'm getting each value um, and using the JSON generator to um, put together the JSON and then doing an import on that. Uh, here's some code where what? I was, um, you know, calling a REST service from Power Builder, and um, I needed to put together the JSON that I was going to send in the request. Okay, so um, I was using the JSON generator once again, and I just asked for each attribute individually, and then uh, put together that what? JSON into a string, and then sent that along in the request. This is the modified code. Now we're seeing um, a lot simpler sy syntax. I just do an export row as JSON and then just send the JSON. Now, in order to use the import and export row as JSON, um, we're going to have to assume that the, um, the structure in the data window and the structure that we need to send to our service or get from our service match. In this case, it did. Okay, some new features been added to the JSON generator. There's a new save to file function. Um, 
So now there's an uh, additional optional argument to indicate what the encoding is going to be. So the default is UTF 16 LE, which is generally not the format um, you normally save, save JSON in. Usually it will be like UTF 8. And then get JSON blob, um, same thing. There's an argument to indicate um, what you want to, what encoding you want. Um, once again, the default is UTF 16 LE. That happens to be the, the default format that, that Power Builder uses internally. But generally, when you're sending JSON back and forth to people, you're, you actually use uh, UTF 8. So you probably want to include that, that argument, if, at least if you're interacting with other services. Uh, this parser has some new methods. There's the contain key. Um, previously, what you had to do is um, try to get the data and then check to see if it was null. Now you can actually just say, is the, is the value even there? And not bother doing anything. If, if, the, if, you know, if there's some optional attribute in the JSON, you can check to see if it's there or not. And if it's not, you just skip that one. And the get item type uh, allows you to do more dynamic um, uh, work with the JSON. So instead of having to know at, at when you're writing the code what the type is going to be, you can say um, you can tell the JSON parser to look to see what the data went, what the data actually is, what, how it's defined, and uh, and uh, uh, deal with the, the um, deal with it appropriately. So it can be string, number, boolean, null, object, or array. There's a new property. Um, the, the default is that if you try to access a value and the value is not actually in the JSON, it will return an exception. Um, the, you can set it to true, and that means if you try to access an attribute that doesn't exist, it will just return null. Um, the JSON parser also has the new save to file, uh, very much like um, the generator. Okay, that really didn't all. That's all the same, pretty much. And the JSON packager has um, get values and set values. Um, originally, they only took st uh, um, string values. Um, now, new data type specific methods have been added, so you can do a get and set. Um, Blob, boolean, date, date time, number, string, and uh, time. Uh, the JSON packager also has uh, had what you used to have to do before is um, put together the JSON and then add it. Um, now there's functions that actually tra directly transfer um, data into the JSON packager from data windows. Um, so you do the key value. Remember the JSON packager is is for bundling different JLo JSON payloads together, um, so that you can send them all. Let's say you're going to send them to another service, you could package up several JSON, different JSON data sets, into a single data set, pass it all in one uh, transaction, and then on the on the receiving side, they can then split the JSON back apart into the into the different data sets. So the key is what identifies the different data sets. And then you can reference the data window control. Here's your Boolean, oh, actually here, um, that indicates the format that you want to um, uh, set, you know, pull out of the data window, whether it's going to be the simple JSON or the data window JSON. There's a couple other flags in here for some of these, whether or not you want to only get changed rows um, but this one right here, you actually can indicate which you can. Act, well, there's one here, this third one, where you indicate a particular data buffer you want the data from. The fourth one, you can actually say, I want the data from a number of different data buffers. You indicate uh, there's a flag for each of the four different uh, buffers. So there's a flag for primary data, a flag for filter data, a flag for delete data, and a flag for uh, the uh, data window child. Um, there is a there is an optional boolean format. I'm not sure that it makes um, a whole lot of sense um, when you're for simple JSON because I don't know what the, what you would do with the data one child. That's if you're going to go after the data one child data. Um, okay. 
Oh, and another one here where you can actually spec uh, specify um, ending row, starting row, starting column, and the column. And then finally, uh, new uh, method and new property have been added to the JSON Packager, similar to the uh, JSON Parser. The method being the get item type that determines the type of uh, data in the JSON and allows you to dynamically um, respond to that. And the return, return null with an error where um, if, uh, if you try to access a, a value that doesn't exist, whether or not you get an exception or it just returns a null. Uh, same as the previous slide in when I discussed uh, JSON Parser. They do the same thing. Okay, before uh, before we end here, I did promise I was going to show you some demos, so let's uh, let's do that. Okay, so I've got a, a little utility here just for showing off some of the some of the uh, things I was talking about here. Um, so I've retrieved a single row of data from um, uh, it's a um, little test web service out there that anybody can hit but it just returns garbage data. Well, it's that fake Latin stuff. So this is what this is an example. Uh, you know, I mean, you saw in the slides as well of what, of what it looks like when you see simple JSON. So you got the name value pairs and the bracket indicates that it's array and I just retrieved that one row of data. This is data window standard JSON. So, um, you know, identity column, um, the platform, um, the version, uh, a mapping method, the name of a data window, the metadata about the columns, then here's your primary row buffer, the row status one, nothing's changed, the columns and the original data in the columns. Nothing's modified yet. So you don't see that uh, the other, you know, the, the, the original value, well you don't see the original and current values or the, or the columns level uh, flags yet. So um, this is an example of row level import. So here's a here's a bunch of data. Uh, I'm going to export that row, and uh, just go in here and change something. Hopefully, it's still valid syntax, and do a re import row. And uh, yeah, so I, I guess I, I chopped off the body entirely there. But uh, so that's importing and exporting a row of, uh, of JSON. And then this is the JSON packager. So um, we get a blob of data there. Um, so this is all of the data from, from uh, this. There's actually, well, there's like a hundred rows here. So this is all of that data. And then um, the way the JSON Packager works is it takes all that data and then puts it inside of another JSON package that has the key value. Uh, so I just called that demo. I'm going to reset the data window. And I'm using the get value to data window to take all that data back out and stick it back into the data window. And so there you go. There's all 100 rows there. Okay. That's, uh, that's all I had really for the demo. Um, going back to the slides then. Last thing I would point out is um, community.appion.com. Yeah, most people know that. If they know about it at all, they know about it because of the Q and A forums on there. But there's a lot of more. There's a lot more information on the site. Uh, there's a number of blog articles. I've written a few up there, um, and there's code samples. And so all the code samples for all my sessions um, will be up there as well. So you can download them and go through them and see how they work. Uh, with that being said, um, thanks for your attention. I hope you enjoy the rest of Elevate 2020.